American propaganda posters of World War II that spurred the country to victory. During the Second World War, propaganda posters in the United States were commonly seen on a walk or commute to work, a trip to the store, in a newspaper or magazine, and any other time one went around town. Posters were not the only form of propaganda used by the U.S. government. They also employed Hollywood, radio programs, and advertisements, cartoons, music, and other forms of media. However, posters were more common than the other methods of spreading propaganda. They could be made in mass quantities and spread around a large area, whereas a movie could only be seen by those going to the theater. Another benefit was that a person's exposure to posters could be longer than a radio program. Someone could only hear a radio campaign during the purchased time slots, but a poster would be on a wall until either the elements or people took it down, or a new poster was pasted over it. During World War I, the Office of War Information, OW, controlled the release of all the American propaganda from the time of its formation to the end of the war. Franklin D. Roosevelt created the agency with Executive Order 9182 on June 13, 1942 with the goal of simplifying the way information about the war reached the public. In order to gain more support from the civilian populace, there needed to be one central agency that could control the information that would reach them. Subjects of the OWL posters included, buying war bonds, careless talk, recruiting, increasing production, conservation, and other ways one could support the war effort. The different themes accompanied the various campaigns that the war agencies launched. If the promotions were to be successful, then posters needed to remind people of the campaigns on a daily basis. Masculine strength was a common visual theme in patriotic posters. Pictures of powerful men and mighty machines illustrated America's ability to channel its formidable strength into the war effort. American muscle was presented in a proud display of national confidence. In the face of acute wartime labor shortages, women were needed in the defense industries, the civilian service, and even the armed forces. Despite the continuing 20th century trend of women entering the workforce, publicity campaigns were aimed at those women who had never before held jobs. Poster and film images glorified and glamorized the roles of working women and suggested that a woman's femininity need not be sacrificed. Whether fulfilling their duty in the home, factory, office, or military, women were portrayed as attractive, confident, and resolved to do their part to win the war. Almost every government building from museums, to post offices and schools, railroad stations, restaurants, stores, and occasionally the sides of buildings would have a propaganda poster hanging for anyone passing by to see. The OWI wanted a total saturation of governmental messages aimed at the average citizen. The messages contained on the posters supposed that every citizen needed to be a better contributing member of wartime society. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel.